So that this we should also so right now we're thinking so like we seeing what the next one like moving the the solution where put into prison. No, I'm really touched. I'm not updating the news. Yeah. So I think it's in Scotland. There's been a lot of solidarity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Scotland, yeah, but yet it's very. Can we take a break? Yeah, yeah. Just because of that, because Scotland. Is also like in present. So the end, there's a, not some regulation, but the, and, and so there's there's a conscious system. Live at the moment. Yeah. I had a Zoom microphone. Yes.
This uh, seminar is uh, a brainchild of the necessity of people from oppressed nations who have had to flee their countries for whatever reason and still are involved in the struggle against oppression in their own homelands. What I realized over a period of time is that all of us who are struggling for freedom, we should have a coordination among ourselves as well. So for instance, the Palestinians, the Catalonians, the Kurdistan, people from Kurdistan and Kashmiris and Scottish people, what we all have in common is that we all want independence, we all want self-rule, we all want freedom. And if we join our forces together, since different parts from where we come are at different stages of their struggle, some are uh, further ahead, some are just gathering their forces so we can learn from each other. For instance, the people of Kurdistan have defeated Daesh and ISIS, which is not mentioned in the BBC and CNN and the Sky, but we know that for sure. Despite the fact that they, on one hand, had to fight the Daesh, and on the other hand, they had to fight the Turks as well, who did not want uh, the Kurdish to fight the Daesh and liberate, as a result of the fight, liberate their own homeland. We as Kashmiris, I come from Kashmir, I think we are the least um, or the far behind in the struggle for freedom compared to the comrades who are here today. And uh, so how are we going to do this today is we are going to have a speaker who has just arrived from Gaza. He is uh, first time in Glasgow, he is doing a master's and uh, he will do a presentation and uh, after that I would like uh, Comrade Oreo from Catalonia to give his presentation and uh, after that uh, Comrade Rosa who is uh, a very popular uh, activist in Glasgow and we are very lucky to have a female activist uh, from one of the main freedom fighting organizations at the moment in the world and uh, they have set great examples where the female comrades have defeated patriarchy and have put their pots and pans down and they have lifted guns, they picked up guns and they fought Daesh, they defeated Daesh and now they fight <coughs> the Turkey imperialist aggression in Africa. After Comrade Rosa, I will uh, request Comrade Jordi to speak about uh, a new venture in Scotland that, uh, concerning the Scottish independence. Uh, it is very important and he will tell us what his inspiration was for this organization. And finally, I will present Kashmir so that when you leave, you remember Kashmir and you forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> so I will, without any further ado, I would like Comrade Moyes from Gaza. To, to get here. Uh, first, I want to thank Rosa for bringing me here today. Uh, it was like a shock for me. I am not here because I'm working uh, for the uh, Philip. Stevens, yes. Yeah, and Chris Stevens. I will email him to help me to get my visa. And she is the one, she is not here. <laughs> done it, so thank you. Uh, now, peace to the land of peace, but uh, never have a peaceful day. Peace to Palestine, peace to the Holy Land, peace to Jerusalem. Uh, today, I want to thank uh, Mr. Amjad for bringing us all here today, and I want to thank the Palestinian education community uh, for choosing, for selecting me to represent Palestine and to represent Gaza. Uh, big thanks for everyone of you to allow uh, for allowing us to be here. I looked up an intensive name in the dictionary to choose a word 
to describe the suffering of the suffering trauma of the Muslims and to, uh, of the families who lost their beloved and who lost their homelands. But actually, all my trials uh, fails, and the world leaders fails to bring peace to Palestine. So today, actually, Palestinian uh, uh, the Palestinian history is full of the colonialism and the occupation, and now it is end up with the Israeli occupation since uh, 1948. Uh, and I would like to talk about two major issues uh, in Palestine: the apartheid rule in the West Bank and the Gaza siege. So let's see those videos. Excuse me. Thank 
Now let's talk about uh, the Gaza CEH. Uh, actually, there's a, a short, brief video also for the Gaza because I don't want to do, uh, talk too much because it's only 10 minutes. So just a second. sent my friend uh, two days ago as I was speaking out about the aggressive problem in Gaza as you know that uh, there it is uh, off for all, uh, I myself when I was in Gaza the crisis is off like 240 hours, 24 hours and it's only uh, on like four hours a day
I'll be very brief as well. And I want to be to my, my speech to be centered in two main topics. First of all, as we can see, the title of this seminar is The Openness Nation. So I want to explain you and to make a brief list of cases of oppression or depression that we are currently living in the colony. And then about the necessity of building an international solidarity and how it is important in international solidarity. So first of all, um, I am sure all of you have seen the images of the first October referendum. That was an example of like political um, sort of public repression on just peaceful citizens that don't think that the only, their only crime was to vote, that they wanted to vote, and that's why the Spanish government sent the police to, to beat us and to hurt us. Um, but as well, apart from this kind of repression, that is maybe when you think about repression, the first thing about it is about being killed by the police. But there's still well, a kind of repression that is about uh, people being called groups and as well people being held in prison, uh, as I just mentioned before, and that I will go by the end of the speech. But for example, just an example, uh, it was yesterday. So in one of the manifestations, there was just there uh, a pol Spanish policeman just wait waiting there, and one kind of clown, he works as a clown, he was just um, besides him, just standing, and he put himself like a red nose, a red clown nose. And uh, for that, uh, the Spanish court has said that it's a hate crime, so he's being called to court. And he, he will probably have to pay a fine, and why not, because it's a hate crime, maybe he will be thrown into prison as well. Also, um, another case of these strange cases that you see that, how the hell can this be happening? Um, um, a mechanic, a mechanic, so a person that um, repairs cars. Um, in his town there was some Spanish policeman that participated in hitting people the 1st of October, and he went there and he asked if the mechanic could repair his police car, and he said, no, I don't want to repair your police car. Yes, that's a mind. I don't want to repair your police car because you participated in hitting my people, on hitting the Catalan people, on repressing Catalan people. And for that as well, he's been called to court to declare for a hate crime. And the last point that I think is very important because this is truly shameful, is that right now we have four, four good people that are held in prison. Two of them are politicians and the other two are leaders of civic uh, peaceful organizations. One of them is the National Catalan Assembly, so a former or now former leader um, is in prison for 116 days. And the other two politicians that are there, so there are two politicians who are civic people, the two politicians today is the date that marks 100 days since they entered um, prison. Of course, all of them with families, in fact, one of the prisoners, one of the leaders of their of civic organizations has a child, I think, that he was born just a few months before he entered prison. So I think he's not even a year now. And he's living his first day of his life uh, without a father, because the father is, is healthy in Madrid as well. So Madrid, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a city that is 600 kilometers away from Catalonia, which makes it very difficult for the families to go there and visit those prisoners. And there has been yet no trial for them, so just preventive prison, you know, because preventive prison is a thing that you apply right to re real dangerous people that you cannot really let them to be free amongst other people. Their only crime was to organize civic and always, 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 and I want to say that because it's very important, always peaceful um, demonstrations. That for the civic people, the two leaders of the organizations, and the two the two politicians, their crime is to have organized a referendum to let Catalan people decide their own future. I mean, I am Catalan and I want to decide my own future. So yeah, there are four people, and as well during all I think of February and March, more politicians and more people. In fact, um, three days ago, a friend of mine, uh, he he went to declare uh, in front of the police, who was not arrested. But he went to declare because he organized a, meet, a you know a, a campaign meeting, you know before the first of October, an event to talk, talk about voting yes, and he was the organizer of this event, and that's why he was called in, into into the police 
to declare about it and to explain this. When that event as well, some music groups participated, and I think all of them have been called by the police to demand explanations, to say, what, why did you participate? I mean, it's a, it's a music group, of course, they are asked and they comply, and they think it's a good cause. They went there and they, particip they participated with their music, and what music groups are for, right? So that brings me to the other point that is as well the main point of this seminar of the necessity between international solidarity. Um, I think this is a crucial point because, as I've just said before, the thing that really unites us, the, the nationalities to be represented here, but as well a lot of other nationalities like the Basque, the Galician, the, the Britannists, uh, the Corsicans, for example, that are now Corsicans you might have seen something in the news because Macron is refusing to, to deal a new constitution, a new, a new status for them, because they are not And so, yeah, if you want to... So I think we are uh, oppressed nations, and another thing that can them is that we are not really big nations. So we don't have that much power. So our only power, or only real power, is the power of the people. Is the power of the people uniting to say that's our land, we want to defend it, and that's what we are doing. And, and that we want as well to defend, to defend our rights. And, and of course, as now we just heard it from Palestine, um, each one, as I was saying as well, each one, I mean, it's a different situation, of course, for every nation and every region of the world. But is that what unites is that we're all human, so we all have power as a community. where there's a left movement 
of the people who are grassroots. It's something that is new and for myself, I'm very fascinated about such a movement and what we can learn from it from Scotland perspective because I am a citizen of Scotland and I feel like I will grow up in Scotland really. I feel I'm from Scotland and Kurdish background so I have two identity and I can never leave any of them. Um, but really that's a struggle within myself. <laughs> So um, really just going back to the Kurdish people, at the current situation, Afrin is being attacked by the Turkish state, which is the most powerful state within NATO. So really the UK government, which is in, in London and is sponsoring, have given millions and billions of pounds, billions, to the state militarily supporting it while they are using um, their weapons against civilians. And I think that could go for the Palestinian people as well, um, of which I think for Catalonia is very peaceful, which yes. we want to be like that. We, 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 we inspire for that. And I think in Scotland we are, we want a peaceful demonstration as well. And I think that is something that we can learn from, from the Palestinian perspective and from the Kurdish perspective. Unfortunately though, the states we are fighting with, they're not really democratic. They say they are democratic and peaceful, but they are not. And I think maybe that's why, because we're not in the European countries, we are outside and really in the Middle East there is um, a, a patriarchy, there is a um, really no rights of civilians, there's a journalist will be imprisoned for speaking up about the truth. So there are a lot of barriers that is within our struggle. Um, so really going back to the Kurdish people, the Kurdish people are 40 million thousand people. So we are talking about 40 million people in the Middle East, which is Really, in Turkey, the majority of the Kurdish people are placed, which is 20 million people um, in Turkey, where the HDP party, the People's Democratic Party, did, they, they stood for election, and they implemented the ideology of Abdullah Öcalan. He has many books about how the left and how society should uh, be created. It's a philosophy that it's I would say some more Marxist uh, left ideology within anarchism. Uh, so it's really a new ideology and that how grassroots people, local people, as we see we are here, we're from the local community, they are involved in every decision. They are involved in every decision that is made for that community. So therefore, it goes from the grassroots up the decision. It's not coming from the top down. So really, it's an ideology that has not really been um, implemented anywhere else, but it has been in Rojava, in Syria. So the people, when they talk about uh, Syria and the civil war and the Assad regime, they never ever talk about this peace, peaceful movement by the Arabs and the Kurds who have created this ideology locally. So there are councils, there are um, commutes, the municipalities of this region they have created for themselves in the north of Syria. It's just amazing. However, Turkey is very scared of this peaceful democracy being created just beyond its border. So that's why they are now attacking Afrin. Afrin is a symbol, and that's why I want to highlight at the moment the people, the Kurdish people, the YPGs, YPJs, the women, are fighting this dictator, uh, fascist ideology of Erdogan's regime, the AKP government. So really, it's an ideology uh, clash as well. It's not just about the, the minorities. And I, I want to raise that more because the Kurdish movement is not just a, it's a, it's a movement for self-determination, but it's a movement to bring peace to the stability of that state, to bring a democracy within that state. So that's what democratic confederalism is actually, is this concept meaning to bring peace to the state. It needs to be established democracy 
before it can have self-determination of the Kurdish people. So that is what um, we are fighting for. Uh, however, the, if you go back to the Kurdish people in Iraq, it's a different uh, campaign for independence. And I wanted to highlight that, which I'm from that part, and I believe in self-determination for every nation, and I'm Kurdish, but however, I think the, the statehood for that, it's very right-wing Tory um, politics in that region. It's very capitalist, it's very uh, oppressive, even the KDP party, even though they're Kurdish. However, they're trying to uh, uh, become a state of capitalism and uh, to uh, establish independence. So that's why in that concept, oh, I do not agree with it, because that's why Turkey has a good relationship with Masoud Gazali, which is the leader of the Kurdish um, uh, region, the Kurdish, Democ um, Kurdish party in Iraq. And that is, I think, it's a difficulty that uh, it has. So there are different ideologies <coughs> clashing within the Kurdish uh, movement and everybody thinks the movement should be different and how we can establish independence within four states. So it's much complicated than it is just comparing to one state. Um, I don't know how many minutes I have left. We have five minutes but carry, carry on. <laughs> yeah, I'll speak for another two, yeah, three minutes. Uh, I think though, in, in, in general, to bring it back to why we are here uh, from the Palestinian and the Catalans and Scotland and Kashmir, really we need to stay solidarity with each other. And I, I'm sure, um, I hear from my father uh, that um, the Kurdish movement, um, the PKK, the Kurdish Workers' Party, which is now listed as a terrorist organization by many states, um, but only for fighting for their rights, uh, he actually used to support the Palestinian people. And I think that goes back to like the, 80, uh, the 1980s and uh, most of the people who gave blood to the Palestinian people. And I think that was really, it, it's for me when I look back to it, you know, that solidarity is a link. It needs to come back. Why we are not bringing back our solidarity? For me, it has to be a left move because I believe in a left ideology, I believe in people's rights, and I believe in people's power. Because people's power is so important that we, we discard, discard it sometimes, we, don't, we forget about how important people's power is. And we need to make decisions at the end of the day. I think it should be grassroots led campaigns, not, not top down, but bottom up. That's my Thank you very much. So, now you know that Glasgow has got a brilliant speaker here <laughs> among us, and uh, we hope that we are going to uh, listen to her speeches and learn from her experience and the experience of the Kurdish people as we go along with our struggles at the same time. So now I would like to Jordi. Ruby, I don't have a great deal to say other than I, I wanted to show the video. Yeah, show the video then. To describe how, we, how we're trying to set up an organization. Okay, shall we then Along the lines, along the lines yeah, of... Why not? Yeah. Why not? Give some of the to the
Union man said that we can't have a nation to hold. Union man said that we can't have our own pot of gold. Union man said that you'll starve if you're old. Union man said we can't have a nation to hold.
Cultural operates. We in Scotland for the last referendum we had the Yes Scotland, yeah. but they disbanded straight after the referendum. Yeah, I think that there was. I was at a meeting. I was yeah. Well, <laughs> ANC started around the same time, and and they look where they've gone. Uh, there's a meeting going on in the other side of Glasgow at the moment. The Yes Yes groups are all gathering in the Admiral Bar in Glasgow. It's on now. I just left it, left, left it to come here. They're there discussing. I was going to bring this up at that meeting, 
but there's so many things going on there, I didn't see the point. The information is here, it's online. Uh, we, we, we're organising meetings monthly to try and get people interested in setting up this campaign for a separate entity in Scotland along the lines of the ANC or Omnium. Yeah. But if we have ANC Scotland at the moment setting up, and there's one in Glasgow, there's one in Edinburgh, uh, Oreo will tell you they're looking to set up in all the different cities in Glasgow. If that takes off, then we're quite happy to drop the AMD things that we're trying to set up and just work along with the ANC, or we have a separate entity. Just uh, the, the Catalan Defence, well, the Catalan Defence Committee are also working with the ANC at the moment. We can continue that dialogue, yeah, another another day, yeah. So. Imperialism 
that divided the Pashtuns in the northwestern India between Afghanistan and the tribal belt that is now part of Pakistan, where the Taliban and they all now uh, have uh, what they say. And in 1948, Mountbatten manipulated the imperialist division of the independent state of Jammu and Kashmir that divided our country into Pakistan administered Kashmir and Indian administered Kashmir, which has so far caused the people of the subcontinent four wars and much loss of lives. Comrades, during the colonial era, India was administered by two entities, and this is where the key lies. One was called the British India. It was under the direct rule of the British Crown, and the second part was composed of semi-autonomous princely states that had various financial and economic agreements with the British Crown. So, according to the British in, uh, British India Independence Act 1947, uh, it was decided to divide India on communal and religious basis into Pakistan and India. At the time of partition of India in 1947, there were a total of 562 semi-autonomous princely states in the Indian subcontinent. They were given a choice to annex with India or Pakistan. But they also were given a choice to remain independent if they desire so. So the monarch of the state of Jammu and Kashmir, Maharaja Hari Singh, was faced with a dilemma. He was a Hindu ruler with a Muslim majority population. Hence the monarch asked for more time to consult his people before he could announce which option he would choose. This led to the signing of, a treat, of an agreement called Stand Still Agreement with India and Pakistan. So it was standstill agreement, we are not joining you, we are not joining you, we are consulting our people, we are going to discuss with our people. Taking advantage of the social and religious sectarian turbulence and the chaos that partition uh, India, that the partition of India had caused, the Pakistani establishment engineered an attack on the sovereign state of Jammu and Kashmir. Around 5,000 Pashtuns from the warrior tribes of the northwestern frontier region, which is near Afghanistan, were hired by the Pakistan were, were hired by Pakistan to attack the state of Jammu and Kashmir. They were promised a sum of rupees 300,000 as a fee for their services. On October 22, 1947, Pakistan launched a surprise attack on the state of Jammu and Kashmir from five entry points. The monarch was caught unprepared and had only a handful of troops to push the attackers back. As Pakistani troops got closer to Srinagar, the capital of Jammu and Kashmir, the monarch asked the newly appointed Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru to send Indian troops to defend his state from the aggressors. It was at this point that Mountbatten intervened, because Mountbatten was the vice president, he was the governor general of India. He asked the monarch to sign an agreement of accession with India before any help could be sent. <coughs> Under pressure, the monarch signed the instrument of accession on 26th of October 1947, just after four days of the, the war had started, and fled to Bombay with his family and the family jewelry. What the British East India Company could not achieve in nearly 200 years of its barbaric rule over the Indian subcontinent was thus attained in just four days. The state of Jammu and Kashmir, including provinces of Ladakh and Gilgit Baltistan, had now for the first time become occupied territories. From 15th of August to the 22nd of October, from 15th of August, which was the partition of India Day, to the 22nd of August when it was attacked, the Kashmir state. 1947, the state of Jammu Kashmir remained independent and sovereign. Meanwhile, the monarch had decided to remain independent and had decided to hand over power to political forces of the state. For that, is, that was the only solution they came up with. 
that we will have democracy so that whether the Muslims or the Hindus through democracy they can get their own elected members. Indian troops were airlifted to Sri Nagar on October 27, 1947. As Indian troops pushed Pakistani troops back, never approached the United Nations Security Council and complained about the Pakistani attack. United Nations Security Council intervened and called upon both India and Pakistan to sign a UN resolution known as UN Resolution 47. It was adopted on April 21, 1948. The resolution promised the people of the state of Jammu and Kashmir the right to decide about the future of their country by holding a plebiscite, which now we call a referendum. You know, it's the same problem, same thing. No date was set for allowing the people of the state of Jammu and Kashmir to decide upon their fate. They didn't set a date, so it lingers on and on and on and on. Seventy years have gone past. Meanwhile, United Nations resolution on Kashmir divided our country, and a ceasefire line was drawn, which allowed more than 4,000 square miles of Jammu territory to be administered by Pakistan, and more than 80,000 square miles to be administered by India. Since 1947, the people of Kashmir have lost more than 100,000 men, women and children during their struggles for regaining their independence. More than 100,000 people have died so far. Even more have been mined or suffered serious injuries during peaceful protests. There is a large presence of Pakistani troops in Pakistan administered Kashmir and 600,000 Indian troops are stationed permanently in the Indian occupied Kashmir. Pallet guns are used to disperse peaceful crowds that has made people lose their eyes and turning them blind. Because a pallet gun is a gun when you fire it, it, it swashes out these small pallets. So they hit you on, on, if they hit you on the face, they, they hit you on the eye, damage your eye. The ceasefire line has divided communities just li living just across the line of control for 70 years. And for 70 years, families are prevented to reunite more like your uh, war. Suddenly, there, there is a cease Half the village is there, half is there. The son was there, the mother was there. 70 years have gone. They can't go to each other's houses. They can't meet. I'm living in Gaza. I cannot go to those things. Yeah. Even if it is a, uh, it is a citizen of my country, yeah. I cannot move in my country. Same here. We are yeah, citizens, we should be citizens, but yeah. we cannot move. So, since 1948, both Indian and Pakistani establishments have managed to create puppet government. This is the key now that we are trying to, you know, solve this as well. Since 1948, both India and Pakistani establishments have managed to create puppet governments on each side of occupied Kashmir that have conveniently become junior partners of their respective colonial masters in the plunder of our land. These include Jammu, Kashmir, Ladakh, Gilgit, and Baltistan. Our organization called the Movement of Consensus is fighting to free these Himalayan occupied territories. Now, all of these uh, states are in the foothill of Himalaya. So we have come up with this idea that everyone uh, unites on a class base against our local national bourgeoisie and the imperialist occupiers and simultaneously build a revolutionary struggle to get rid of all of them and form a f federation of Himalayan states. Sounds a bit... Uh, Ambitious, but we'll see. <laughs> Our organization called the Movement of Cons for Consensus is fighting to free the Himalayan occupied territories. We believe that the only way to freedom, the only way freedom can be won is by placing the class interest of people of the Himalayas before the interests of the bourgeoisie of the occupied states. Our struggle is based on the promotion of democratic alliance of the people of all occupied Himalayan lands in order to initiate a united struggle that promises all of the four entities the right of self-determination including succession, secession with the option of joining 
uh, which we anticipate uh, as Union of the People's Democratic Republics of Himalaya. Comrades, I believe it is of immense importance for the people of oppressed nations of the world to unite their forces against a bunch of imperialist criminal <laughs> who have caused our divisions and benefit from us divided. You know, they cause our, us, our divisions and they benefit from our, us being divided. If we unite, we win. If we divide, they win. So the movement for consensus tends to support each other's struggle and learn from each other. In this, it is in this light that we have invited all of you to the seminar today for us as Kashmiris and as people from the occupied territories of the Himalaya. It is the dawn of a new chapter in our struggle for freedom. Up until today, we were disconnected and disjointed with the revolutionary struggle of the oppressed nations of the world. But as of today, we are joining the struggle of the oppressed people of Palestine, Catalonia, Scotland, and Kurdistan. Today, we join you in the broader struggle to make this world a more tolerant, democratic, and a just world. Thank you very much.
the life is getting harder and harder in Gaza. Yeah. And uh, also that uh, repression in the, in the West Bank is also increasing, although life is not so hard there on a day to day basis, but, but pressure is increasing with the checkpoints and various other things. And, um, do you get the impression that because of people in the West Bank having solidarity with people in Gaza, and because of the, the increase in the repression in the West Bank, that there could be another, not, not, not strategically because they've decided to do it, but because of the forces pressed upon them, that there could come about another intifada. Yeah, you mean that uh, the West Bank, they are fighting to, to make like a protest and solidarity with the Gaza? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, actually we are one people and we are, we are one nation. So yeah. it, is, uh, it is like a duty to protest uh, against the Israel uh, and solidarity with the Gaza. But uh, you're asking, the, the, your question is about the Palestinian police? Yeah. I think there is uh, no problem for Palestinian police uh, for the protest uh, in solidarity with Gaza and with the West Bank. The problem is that uh, the clashes and the conflict, uh, cl uh, the clashes point with the Israel because you know that uh, some uh, some some uh, protesters like uh, throw the stones in the Israel and the, uh, in the other hand the Israel is uh, using the gun and the, yeah they they use live. Uh, Live bullet, bullet to kill, and they sometimes shoot just to kill to prevent the the Palestinian protesters. Mm -hmm. There is no problem with the Palestinian uh, police. Is that your point? You know the Palestinians are not using bullets just now. No, 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 I no, no, I know that, but uh, I'm just wondering if if the pressure becomes too much on the Palestinians, yeah. then maybe the lid pops off. You know, the it's, it's, it's social it's explosion, because, because it doesn't mean success for the Palestinians, it just means that they can't take the pressures anymore and they have to, and they, and they have to react, that's all. To make like a revolution against the Palestinians? Well, another rebellion, a revolution suggests they have success, I don't Israel. see success at the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually the Palestinians, uh, Israeli Palestinian conflict didn't stop and every day there is a clash and there, yeah. there is a protest even in Gaza or even in the West Bank itself. But they, sometimes the media stream just forget Gaza and forget the West Bank and doesn't show uh, it is not shown at the media stream here in the, the West Bank. That's why but it didn't stop the protest in the West Bank and every Every, every Friday there is a protest in the West Bank against, yeah. uh, against the Israeli occupation forces. Mm -hmm. And the clash is at the, at the ch checkpoint. It's like, it's like the Scottish Labour Party, come on. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, I think this is really good and I will send this picture to all my friends from Spain because they, obviously they are different, okay? We, we cannot compare the situation in Catalonia with other situations. Um, but like the, I think the, the deep um, sense of everything is a little bit similar. And I think this makes a, a very good picture and shows the wall like um, the right to decide and the right um, to, to the yourself. Self is, self is, it's, it's here. It's, it's the the answer wall. is a left movement revolution. If that happens, then we all stay solidarity with each other and it's for the people that we're fighting for. We want to create a better future. We, we try not to create 
uh, and an Israeli state. We're trying not to create a Turkish state. We're not trying to create this dictatorship. These states which oppress people, where there's not democracy, where there is not rights, where there's no women's rights, uh, basically that's what we're fighting for. And what the left movement is, is basically saying ownership to be owned by the people themselves, not to be owned by the state. That's basically it, and grassroots people, communities make decisions. So, from my point of view, I think you're right, like our movement, they're all similar. We're fighting for self-determination, but also we're fighting for all people's rights. But how can we win that? The end of the solution, what is the solution? Um, and for me, I have read so many books, and I have read about Pakistan and Catalonia and Scotland. I'm so glad I grew up in Scotland. <laughs> I, um, I came as a refugee, but to a uh, uh, nation state where they seek self determination. And it's so similar to my background as well. So I see what the movement is and what we're fighting for. We're fighting for to govern ourselves, we're fighting for the people's right, we're fighting for that self-determination, but how can we get there? I, I, for me, I think to get there is for the left movement, and the left movement needs to stop arguing within themselves, I yeah. think. And we need to stop arguing and fighting within ourselves, even like within uh, our um, movement, as from all of the, part, the parts we want to achieve this, is that we should also support each other as well. So we have a lot of work to do. And the work is to stay in connection with each other, to stay solidarity with each other, but also a life movement that agrees with each other as well. Um, we want to, uh, because everything is being tried and nothing is being achieved, really. Uh, and really, like, what is the point of life? We want to create something better. And let's move to a new ideology, and I believe it's a democratic confidentialism for me. If you know what the concept of that means, then you understand what the left movement and that revolution will bring for the people. And as we, we're all young here, we're sitting in here and we are discussing this, and many others before have, you know, our father, our grandfather, have believed in this kind of nation and people come, our people to come together and rule themselves and no more oppression. But these guys are very young, but what we can do together and how we can make a change to our movement to bring it to the forefront of the left ideology. And bringing back that ideology, I think, is so important, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm raising that important uh, issue and highlighting it. Okay, what's the next? Also, guys, here only one thing, only one thing. Okay, sir, and you know that. Uh, Beside this kind of question that uh, what the military has been doing in India and Pakistan and what they did in, in Kashmir, it's a one thing I have, I read by the, uh, on the book of Sheikh uh, Kashmir, uh, Sheikh Abdullah. He said that in 1948, when the uh, Kabayans, when the tribe men entered in the, in the Kashmir, he said that Muhammad you know, was not in favor of this, this kind of action. This kind of action was taken by the Sardar Abdul Qayyum Khan in Kashmir. He said that this is a it's a very bad effect, very bad effect in Pakistan. Because <coughs> India every time he made he made some kind of uh, some kind of uh, he made some kind of uh, yeah. pretend. He said that uh, Pakistan involved in this issue, Pakistan involved in He doesn't yeah. like that we make a over there. In mm -hmm. the war of 1955, when the Pakistan was declared on this side, that was absolutely that was wrong. Because the whole world was repressing the India to make this uh, plebiscite in Kashmir. Because this is your 
give your promise for Kashmir, but the big don't do anything, but the Yukon must study the war and the war is in 70 years have gone, we can't we can't for us wrong. Even the in in uh, in Kurdistan, Sheikh Abdullah Ojala, the the Turkish government, plenty of people made against the Abdullah Ojala. But as you know that I'm the I'm my own eyewitness to that what they have been doing with the courts. The courts when they when I entered from Iran to Turkey, you can see the position of the British people. They were absolutely very wrong. But they were absolutely very bad. They are the worst in the worst circumstances they are living over there. In Istanbul I have seen that plenty of young boys, 24, 24 hours they worked over there and they are getting very small amount of money. And they are in the worst condition. But why? But, but as you know that the, every time they said that the courts attack on the Turkish army, could attack on the Turkish army and they killed a lot of Turkish children, but plenty of course they were also killed by the by the Turkish by the Turkish army. And that was a big issue. Turkish army is a terrorist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They said that they are terrorists. They are terrorists. They are terrorists. But I, as you know, that they, 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 they can't see that. It's a plenty of people, they are, they are living in the worst conditions. Yeah. Most of the Turkish, sorry, I'm just going to uh, talk about this. Uh, most of the Turkish people who are working, the Kurdish, the yeah, Kurds, yeah, yeah. so the working class people are Kurdish people in Istanbul and Turkey. You know, they are doing all the labor work. Uh, for me, I'm also a trade unionist, and trade unions also have a left movement I, uh, in that, and I think it's so important, um, as, as well as creating trade unionists yeah, yes, in our yes. movement. I don't know if that is the case for your from Kashmir, and is there any trade unionist, that is there Catalonia, is there any trade unionist support of all that your movement? There's, there's one there's one trade union that is supportive of uh, all trade unions are in theory in favor of self determination, mm -hmm. but just one of them has been like a very strong position in, uh, in favor of self determination. One Catalan trade union because the two main trade unions are uh, all Spain, mm -hmm. so it depends. All organizations that cover all of Spain, they always have like quite ambiguous uh, things to say because they know that. Depending on what they say, they will lose. Mem they will lose members either in Catalonia and the rest of Spain. Yeah. But these are uh, and also there's a uh, more than trade unions. Maybe it's like for example we have like the fire the firefighters. Yeah. They had a very important role in the first of October, and also the people that work in the in the docks. So the working people in the docks, uh, you know, in the before the first of October, some Spanish police, but some big boats for Spanish police living there went there and because the workers and the dogs knew what they were there about, they did not like that. They were just against them. So, so they, they tried to make their lives there impossible. Mm -hmm. And then they were interested. Well, uh, finally I would like to thank the panel for coming, taking the time. I know they have to work, uh, they are busy, the diaries are always full. So thank you very much for uh, coming. And I thank everyone else who has Brave the weather, brave the maybe kind of uh, you know unattractive title maybe for some uh, to come to a seminar. Uh, it's our tradition that uh, whenever we finish, we do a finance uh, appeal, so a fighting fund for the next event. So whatever people can uh, you know donate. Thank you very much. We should take a picture as well. Yes. I think I think it's
If you want to show your solidarity with the political prisoners, then we have as well envelopes with their addresses in prison. So they will receive those letters from here from Scotland with your message of support or solidarity. Yeah, that we have a lot of them there.